Welcome back to BAS 121. We're going to take a look at this, um, <clears throat> some of our forecasting tools and examples that are given in the book. And we're also going to introduce the Excel Miner add-in in the Analytics Solver platform. Now, there's tutorials on Frontline that you should go through, but I'll give you a quick tour in this video. We talked in the last one about a moving average and how to do that in Excel and how to do that in Excel Miner, how to read the error results, how to refine, how much lag do we want to put in the moving average, and what that does is it does some sort of smoothing. Now, the next thing we're going to show you here, and, and this tells you the example we're going to use, and here are all the sample data sets down here in red. We're going to talk about exponential smoothing. Uh, and we're going to show you how to do that in Excel Miner and Excel. Double exponential smoothing, some of the linear regression that you've seen, how do we apply seasonality, and then we're going to talk about the Holt Winters tool, which allows you to put in some seasonality into your thing, along with some uh, uh, weighting uh, in, which is pretty powerful. So let's take a look at the uh, tablet sales here for a week. Um, and let's do some on the tablet sale. We told you how to do the moving average. That's relatively, I'll do it one more time for you. Go up here, select your data, go to Excel Miner. We're in a time series. We're smoothing our time series. So we can come up here and we can do moving average. And then it says, what is your data range? Notice it's already put it in there for me. It's already put in the workbook. Um, and then we just have to say down here, our time variable, well, that's pretty straightforward. That's weeks. And our selected variable that we're trying to forecast is units sold. And we hit OK. And we're going to get the smoothing averages. Output number two, you can see there we've got the smoothing average, okay? And we put an interval in, in this time of two weeks. So we're lagging it every two weeks. That's why you don't see a forecast here for the two, first two weeks. But here it gives you each week what your actual was, what your forecast was, and what the residual was, a plot of the two differences. So that's exponential smoothing using our Excel miner. Now we could have gone back. We could have lagged it three weeks, four weeks. You do that by trial and error till you get the best fitting model. And remember, down here it gives you the errors. So here's our percentage error. We have a 23% error. Um, so let's talk now, now that we've done the um, moving average, let's say we wanted an exponential smoothing. We wanted to smooth it a little differently. We could do some exponential. Again, it puts it in there. Let's put in our uh, range. And again, it, our variables. So there and there. Now, what this weight is, you can put in an alpha to say how much you want to weight it, how much exponential. This puts an exponent in front. Or you can just hit, hit here and say optimize it for me. Computer, you tell me what the best one is, what the best alpha I should choose. And that's normally the choice I do. Hit that, and it gives you an exponential smoothing. Once again, you get the forecast, the actuals. You get a chart. You get to look down here whether you've actually improved the model with exponential smoothing. And in this case, we have not. All right. Then you can come over here uh, and do, we could do some double exponential smoothing. Again, let's put in our data ranges so it shows. And again, our time series is on weeks and our unit sold is here. We hit OK. And again, it gives us the same type of information with exponential smoothing. And you can see we haven't gotten a whole lot better than we haven't really improved from the moving average. So that's, that's sort of your moving average, your exponential, uh, linear regression we showed you in 
prior one. That's where, let's take the coal production. This is where we could come down here. And again, I just went to our regular data, data analysis regression, and did a simple regression. Now, one thing I did do is I did change my years to years after 1960. Normally with years data, you're going to want to do that so that you start from a, a um, index point. So I indexed the 1960 and said years after 1960s. And there I got my coefficients and my p-values look very good and my r-squared looks very, very good. Uh, now, the gas usage example, this is where we have seasonality in play. Okay, We can see we've got a lot of seasonality so what we can use here on this set of data is we can use uh, to smooth out our seasonality, we have our Holt winners. Now notice it says multiplica mul multiplication, addition, and no trend. So addition is where I have a very stable trend. It's not, which is what this looks like. This peak and that peak and that trough and that trough are about the same. The multiplicative is where I have very uneven peaks and values. So depending on, you're going to want to graph your data first, take a look. But here I would use the additive. And it says I have to put in my data range. So my data range is... My data range is... down here now my time variable pretty straightforward my gas usage now my periods is how many how often my peaks and this seems to be annually so I'm going to say I've got two seasons it knows that because notice I had 24 rows so it immediately calculates that for me. And here is I've put in weights. You can play around it. With, there's not an optimization function here. But you can play around with the different weights, how much I want to weight the seasonality, the trend, etc. And I just hit, and it gives me the same stuff, all my forecast, my trend lines, my residuals, all for analysis. So you've got all of this, and it's called a Holt Winters tool, which you see out of the book. All of these are ways to take forecasts and smooth the data until you get a model that seems to be working uh, very, very well. These are the examples from Chapter 10. Any questions, let me know.